Hey girls, it is time for our book club. I am trying to see if this is going live for you guys right now. Let me look real quick. Okay, it is. So I want to talk about our Simplified Life book that we are talking about for the month of October. And I just want to dive right into the book and the printables that I've got. Um, if you haven't downloaded the printables, they're in the Facebook group uh, files. I put them in a couple hours ago. So let me check real quick if we have any questions. Here I am. Okay. Last time... I had where you guys were commenting and I didn't see the comments at all. So I've got a computer pulled up over here where I can talk to you guys and look at your comments at the same time. Um, so let me see if anybody's in the group, if anybody has joined. I see two people are in the group. So go ahead and tell me um, where you're from. I can see names, but I don't know where everybody's from. Sometimes we have people from like New Zealand, other times we have people 10 minutes down the road, and so I just like to know where you're from. So if you'll just put in the comments kind of where you're coming from, I would love to know that. All right, while people are joining the group, I'm gonna flip the camera around to start digging into the meat of this book. If you haven't read it yet, it's a great book for organizing. I literally have been running around the house this morning organizing stuff because of things that I've done in this book. And I'm so excited to tell you about some of the changes that I've made and some practical tips you can take from this book, whether you've read it or not. So let's dive in. All right, we've got Shannon is from Nashville. Hey, Shannon. We've got Whitney from Texas. Yay, woohoo, Texas. I know Whitney. Hello. I see Melissa Patterson. She's in Texas. Hey, Melissa. Haven't seen you in a long time. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what was in the book that I enjoyed. Let me see if this light would help us out a little bit. Okay, what's that? Hey girls, thanks for your patience. Okay, so A Simplified Life is by Emily Lay. She has a whole line of organization tools that I didn't know about until after I read this book. And I actually use her daily planner. I've tried so many and I have um, settled on her daily planner because I feel like it's the most helpful and simplified, uh, no pun intended. Um, so I'll show you some of her products after the video, but right now let's go into some things. The book talks about basically um, it's not an, a big theological book. It's not a deep study. It's just practical tips for simplifying your life, such as your space, your style, your meals, your schedule, finances, hospitality, technology, self, motherhood, and faith. And so I've made some worksheets for us to kind of put this into action. And I wanted to talk first about, um, why she felt the need to do this and why we're do, uh, doing this is it become it's not to become minimalist it's not to become perfectionist it's not to look pinterest perfect um i just wanted to read what she said of why she does this and it resonates with why i'm doing it as well i don't organize or structure life just because it's my job or because i want things to look good from the outside i do these things because i want a life that's rich and sweet and uncomplicated I don't want to be weighed down by day-to-day -day responsibilities. I want to be able to enjoy Saturdays, make memories with my family instead of folding mountains of laundry. I want dinner to be a calm time to reconnect and enjoy good food with the people I love, not a rushed, chaotic evening ritual I'm hoping to survive. Anyone relate? 
I want to be able to sit with my kids or with a friend and wholeheartedly listen, not spend my day with stresses running around my head. I want to be able to enjoy this beautiful life, not be constantly overwhelmed by it. Uh, maybe give me a heart or a thumbs up if you resonated with any of that, because I for sure did. And then the other thing that I like that she said um, at, in this intro was she said, you can't experience simple joys when you're living life with your hair on fire. You don't hear the joy in those sounds when your brain is reciting and rehashing your to-do list. You can't enjoy the warmth of an afternoon breeze when you're clamoring to get inside because you have so much left to do. Yes, certain tasks have to get done. Let's not negate the responsibilities of life. But a simplified life means that what has to get done will get done. And when we pare down life to its simplest, most beautifully basic parts, we're left with room to enjoy each other, to rest, to truly savor life with our hearts, minds, and spirits. And this kind of goes with the culture of our busy culture and that the busier you are, the more important you are, or the more money you're making, or um, just the the skill of multitasking, which actually is, they're saying you can't technically multitask. Nobody can actually multitask um, because your brain can't focus on multiple things at once. Um, so you're only giving half attentions to all these little things or partial attentions. Um, and so I have learned that I used to pride myself on multitasking, um, but really what that meant was I had a lot of projects going at once um, that excited me, but that meant I wasn't 100% focused on anything. And I was a big procrastinator because I would make multitasking my excuse for procrastinating. Um, so I had a lot of unfinished projects at the same time. Um, so the first section is talking about our home and how a lot of us are feeling like we need to buy storage container or storage facilities. We need to upgrade our house. We, our houses aren't, you know, don't fit us anymore. All these kind of mentalities. And a lot of that is because of our instant gratification culture or um, seeing where our parents are now and wanting that when our parents first got married, they didn't have what we had when we first got married and we're trying to attain what they've gotten over their lifetime and all that, you know, comparison things. So she said, what if we approached our homes, not just as houses we live in, but places of true respite, shelters from the outside world, sacred backdrops for cherished family memories and places that have the power to inspire, excite and connect. What if we took the power back from our stuff? You might be thinking, I don't have time to do this. It's too big of a job. I just need to move to a bigger house in a better space. I could argue argue that simplifying can accomplish the same goal, having more space for the things that matter to you. Okay, so I know this is just part one. I'm not going through every section this slowly. I just am settling on this because this is where all of our stuff is. Our finances, um, our kids, our family, our meal planning, our wardrobe, our house, all these things right here where we show hospitality, where we store our technology, all these things happen in this simplify this space that she wants us to help simplify. And so actually, I have been wanting to do a yard sale forever for a couple years because of this book. I actually did the yard sale last month which led to decluttering my kids' rooms, which led to learning places I could sell things like half price books or upscale resale um, clothing places and just getting creative with what do I have that I really need and what's serving a purpose or what's no longer serving me a purpose. So here's what I want you to do is take that first worksheet that I gave you and I want you to grab that simplified space worksheet. And I've actually um, got a way for you to fill this out, um, but if that's not your style, do whatever your style is. I like to draw, I'm gonna draw. If you wanna list, list. So, oh, I didn't grab a pen, so let me grab a pen. Okay, so what I have for you here is basically I want you to map out your house. Now, you're not an architect. You don't have to hand over these blueprints to anyone. You're not selling your house. 
this is for you. So don't worry about drawing. So if you want to list out, if you want your drawing to look um, really rough or really professional, that's up to you. You can also list out instead of draw. So right now I'm just going to do a basic outline of our house. I'm going to say, here's the front door. So you draw the layout of your house. Just think in your head, what does my house look like? Okay. Oh, Amanda has asked an interesting question. Did your help, did your kids help declutter or did you just go in and do it all? And um, when I want to get rid of some of the stuff in the kids' rooms, um, well, usually I do it when they're at school. <laughs> um, so this time I decided we're going to have a yard sale. I'm going to tell the kids anything in your room you want to get rid of, you can sell in the yard sale and I will give you the money that you make towards buying a new toy or allowance or whatever. And so that was cool, but they didn't, my daughter like sold one stuffed animal and my son sold a bunch of stuff, but she didn't want to part with anything. And so that was a great way to be like, you don't play with this, go look in your stuff and you decide what you want to sell for money. So they did that at the yard sale. Then we went in their rooms and kind of went through everything after the yard sale of, um, okay, it's time for this season, the, the colder season is coming, let's go through all of your clothes. And they helped me declutter all of that. Or is this your style anymore? So they helped me go through all that stuff. Um, and they're not as connected to their clothes or emotionally attached to their clothes as they are to their toys. So I also said, let's rearrange your room and make it exciting. And so basically my goal was to get rid of much junk as I could. And so a lot of times I'll be like, let's just put a box in the attic. And so I'll have them pick out things they really, really, really want, but they don't play with it all. And we'll put those in a box in the attic. And then after like a year, if they haven't mentioned them or they see it in the attic and don't care, that's when we get rid of it. And then my other thing is when we're decluttering and reorganizing their room, I'm also making a pile without them knowing it of things I'm about to throw in the trash. So you have to be careful with this pile. Sometimes it's just like they have food in their room uh, or broken toys or like, uh, you know, McDonald's things. And I just throw all that in this little back bucket and I don't announce what the bucket's for. I don't tell them to add to the bucket. It's my personal bucket. And then when we've got their room awesome, we've got all the things where they want them. We've got basically this process the kids have gone through with me. What are things we're going to sell in the yard sale or donate? What are things that we're going to put in the trash? We don't talk about those. And what are things that we're going to put in the attic and revisit later? And sometimes my kids are like, I don't want this thing. And I'm like, well, this is like your prized possession from when you were two and lost your tooth. And I've got some story they don't care about. That stuff can go in the attic too. So donate trash and storage and donate also can go with sell. There's half price books. We'll buy all of your books back and games and records and DVDs. I've gone through all that stuff and you won't get much, but sometimes it's great to not just donate stuff to Goodwill and actually get 20 bucks for it. And then you can be like, let's pick out one game. Like we've literally sold 10 board games we never play and then just went and bought the game of Clue, which my kids have never played. And so we're excited that we've gotten rid of two bags, of, two boxes of games to replace with a brand new game that we could play. So there's all kinds of ways to get your kids involved. But if it is stuff you know they're not going to want to get rid of, um, I suggest doing that when they're out of the house and making sure you put it way at the bottom of the trash can because you don't want anybody's feelings hurt. But sometimes you just got to get rid of stuff and they're never going to want you to do it. But that's your call if you want to put it in the trash or the attic or donate. So um, basically what I'm saying is for you to do this to every single room in your house. So the kids' rooms are an easy place for me to start. Here's my office. Here's my son's room. Here's my daughter's room. Here's my bedroom. Master bedroom. Here's our bathroom. Here's our closet. 
Here's that hallway. So the reason I'm doing this is sometimes we think all we have to declutter is our kids' rooms or the kitchen. And so this helps you understand, like I even have bookshelves in the hallway. We store a lot of blankets and old linens that we don't use in the hallway. And so I've got every single thing. Um, oh, I don't have anything here. But I do have another bathroom here. So I have every single thing accounted for in here. Um, let's just make that part of the closet. That's bothering me. <laughs> okay, so then we got the living room. And then we've got the walk-in where we've got like the coat closet. Then we got a dining room and a kitchen. Then our laundry and the garage. You can even write the back porch, side yard, anything you can think of that has stuff in it that you're like, I need to go through that. So my side yard is literally old plants, old garden stuff, but I need to go through it. I need to get rid of some buckets that need to be in the trash. I need to clean out my flower beds. I might need to replace our hose. So even all that kind of stuff. And so basically what I'm doing here is figuring out I'm going to assign myself one room a day, or you might do one room a week. But I'm going to work through the house, and I'm not going to, I'm going to take my time on it because I don't want to get overwhelmed, and I want to do a good job at it. And basically what I'm doing is sorting through every little thing. Um, and then when I've sorted through it, that means I've donated stuff, I've put stuff in the trash, I've put stuff in storage. I am visual, so I like to highlight that. So let me grab a highlighter. So literally, we did my daughter's room, my son's room, my office needs some help right now. Um, our hallway needs help. <laughs> our front closet is good. I wrote the front door on here just because I have a whole, um, like, I put a wreath on and then I've got, like, little flowers and, like, maybe holiday decorations outside and all that still needs to be kind of cleaned up and organized. I've got a lot of stuff that's been out there for like years that is just stashed under things. So even my front entryway um, area, I need to clean up. So there's not much else in the walk-in besides my front closet. My dining room is good. My kitchen is a wreck. Laundry is okay. My husband's in charge of the garage. He actually did that. Living is good. Okay, so I've got about half the house done in the past month. So that's actually probably more like a one room a week. Because when I get in there, I really go hardcore cleaning stuff. And um, also finding different ways to store things. Less is more. So instead of me having like... I actually just did our closet today. Instead of me having like um, 75 different storage tubs that all are different sizes and they're all just kind of recycled over the years I actually got all the storage tubs out of the closet and I went and got those banker boxes from Office Depot you know like you would put your taxes in and the little cardboard boxes that have a lid and I opened a, I made eight of those put them at the top row of our closet and it's like winter stuff summer stuff um keepsake like holiday clothes or whatever we've got so much random junk and it just looks so much more organized and it was really cheap and I got rid of all the tubs and I, now I'm organizing where my tubs that match go together in the same section so just the visualness of things looking more organized and cohesive is also refreshing to me and helps my family find things easier so that we aren't spending so much time organizing our things. There's a system that you're creating when you're doing this. So let's move on. The clothes and jewelry that you go through. Um, the book said a great idea for deciding if you should keep it. This is kind of like the Marie Kondo method. Um, does it fit you anymore? Is it quality? And is it your favorite? If it doesn't check these three boxes, don't keep it anymore. And that might seem kind of harsh, but when you go through it, it actually is like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So go through your clothes and your jewelry, ask these three questions, um, and then figure out a way to celebrate. So when I am done, I would love to um, get a quote for 
getting my kitchen redone. I cannot afford to get my kitchen redone right now, but for years I've been like, I need a quote, I need to find a company, I need some kind of design ideas. So I'd love to just like get the ball rolling on that. So when I get all of this organized and highlighted, I'm going to celebrate by calling up a company and get some kind of quote for, this is what my dream kitchen would look like, what would it cost, and kind of setting that goal for our family to work up to and figure out how many years it's gonna take for me to get a, get a new kitchen. <laughs> so let's go to the next page. Speaking of the kitchen, this is another sore spot for me. I hate cooking. Um, anyone, thumbs up, thumbs down, do you like cooking? Because if you love cooking, you can come over and cook at my house anytime. Um, yeah, so here's my simplified meal plan. I want to cook about three or four times a week. I also want um, for us to have some kind of plan so that when we sit down, we're not or at the evening after work and after school, we're not going, did you thaw something out? Did you thaw something out? Or how long has this chicken been in here? Can we use like how many times have we had this conversation? And then it's either just do sandwiches or everybody just do your own thing or the kids are all, their default is Chick-fil-A or I want pizza, you know, these bad habits. So I'm trying to simplify my meal plan so that it takes the stress off of having to plan it every night and reinventing that wheel and also just having a meal prep thing. So on, I've got some tips down here that I added that are my tips. Um, meal prep and grocery day. I make every Sunday my meal prep and grocery day. And meal prep, I don't mean like those people who are like, I've made all the meals and chopped all the vegetables and they're ready to put in the oven. No, I'm talking about like, make the plan for what you're going to eat that week. That's all. And I also write it on the the fridge on this little Monday through Friday thing where I say this is what we're eating every day of the week and I kind of ignore the days. I'm just writing, here are seven ideas. And then each night I go and I pick something I want off that list because I'm not always in the mood for what I put on Monday on Monday night. But I might like what we have Thursday and just do that. So the other thing I do is I also go grocery shopping after I've made my meal plan on Sundays. Basically take all those recipes, write down every ingredient. I'm so lazy, I order them through Amazon Fresh. I don't even go to the grocery store. So Monday morning, my groceries arrive at my door from 5 to 7 a.m. And I unload them when I wake up. And yeah, then I'm, I've got all of my groceries ready for every single meal that night. This is something I do for fun that's a way for me to connect with the kids is I always make a muffin. Um, I always order muffin um, kits like the pre-made where you just add the water and the egg and put it in the oven for like 15 minutes. It's super easy. And so I always unload the, the groceries and put some muffins in the oven and that kind of kicks off our week too. My kids love it. They call it Muffin Monday and it's like a super motivator for the kids to get out of bed. I love baking. I do not like cooking. So that's fun for me. Um, so any kind of little simple things that you can repeat, we might have Muffin Monday. You could have things like Taco Tuesday. Uh, we always have Friday night pizza night. So that's like our one night we get to order in. I give us permission to order in once. And uh, we watch a movie or play games as a family. Um, my husband likes to grill. I do not. So I always assign hey, you're cooking, you're grilling something this weekend. So that helps us. Um, and then double what you're making so that you can have leftovers for lunch. And then you can even have like Saturday afternoon or something. You pull all the leftovers out from the whole week and everybody just, just pick a leftover. Let's get rid of this stuff. So that kind of turns into its own meal. So the way this works is basically I'm writing down all of our recipes that we like. So my family likes cheese chicken. That's something that my mom makes. That's something I can make, my family likes. It is a recipe. Um, you can also write down things like roast chicken. Like those rotisserie chickens that you just pick up for 10 bucks that are already made. So you don't have to do from scratch meals on this. You could also do like, um, I guess this would be technically a uh, sandwich, but chicken salad sandwich. You can make the chicken salad. You can go pick up the chicken salad. 
and just put it on some bread. Don't make your meals complicated if you don't want them to be. So basically you're going through each one. We like meatloaf. I also am putting hot dogs in here. That's beef, it's super easy. That's a great Saturday meal. We don't wanna cook anything. So think easy and complicated. Um, spaghetti is for a pasta, that's pretty simple. Um, all the way to, I love making this shrimp scampi knockoff from Italiani's, my favorite um, res uh, restaurant. So write all these things, and then what you're gonna do, this will be your six week meal plan. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. So I want you to write on your calendar for week one, let's see, we've got, you can go buy those crab cakes that aren't very expensive from the um, butcher. I've got lemon butter salmon is easy to make that my kids actually will eat. So basically what you're gonna do is week one, you get out your meal plan. After you've filled this whole thing out, then Sunday you're gonna say, okay, we're doing cheese chicken, meatloaf, spaghetti, crab cakes, chicken salad sandwiches, and then that's Monday through Friday, basically. And the other two days could be, this could actually be Saturday because maybe you have pizza night every Friday. And then Sunday is when your husband grills. So little tips and tricks things over here are where you're gonna find your other days. So we always have an order out night and a night that my husband grills. And I don't make a meal plan for that. I uh, might ask him, like, do you need steak and potatoes or something? Otherwise, he's kind of in charge of that. So see what you guys can do on working together. If you can't, always go make a running list of simple meals, like um, what are some other things I have in there is, like, tomato soup and grilled cheese or buying um, that can, the cans of the pre-made stew from, like, Campbell's and making some cornbread. So really the only thing you're doing is heating up a couple cans of stew and making like jiffy cornbread muffins or something. So make this as simple as possible and that so you can just grab it and go every single week and you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. So the only thing you need to keep up with on this is every Sunday or whatever day, pick a day that you're gonna revisit this, do the grocery shopping, and have it ready to go for you guys. So the next and last thing I wanna talk about are routines. And obviously there's a lot of like finance stuff in this book, there's faith stuff in this book, there is hospitality, there's so much to this, but we would he be here all day if I addressed all the areas. So that's why I want you to read the book for yourself and just use these as kind of um, inspiration to jump off um, and get your stuff organized. She also has uh, questions and spaces to answer these things in the book, as well as an entire product line that helps you in more detail. And her name is Emily Lay, and here's an example of one of her products. They're all just really pretty. They have these this gold, um, stuff on it that makes it real cute. They're always real um, feminine. And then they've got these tabs that are color coded and she actually has like stickers you can use to designate certain tasks to certain colors. I don't get that detailed because sometimes you can over organize to the point where it's like, well now I, I'm limited to this and I like it to be a lot more open-ended. Um, and so, what she's got here is like the little calendar section and then every day she has what you write down for your day and then things to do. So I like write my schedule here like at 12 Facebook live at four pick up kids or whatever it is. And then I'll write like the things I need to do during that day. And so I love this. It's super simple and doesn't overcomplicate things, but she has um, a whole line of stuff. And the place where you find all of your book, my book club books on my Amazon shop, I have a book club board. I also have made an Emily Lay board um, where it has all of her products that you can look there too. So you don't have to figure out where to find all her stuff. So as always, 
go to my Amazon um, storefront, amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Amy, Sh Amy Center. I can't even say my own name. <laughs> so her board is there. The book club boards are there. And let's just run through this real quick. And I'll let you get started on your amazing weekend. It's Friday. Okay, so morning routines is also something that I love doing. Um, here's an example of how this works. Write the time you want to get up. Write what you're going to do. I've got to get my coffee. And then I always journal. And then I do my Bible study. Or maybe you take the kids to school and then do your Bible study. Or maybe you're an evening person and you get up later in the morning and you do your Bible study at night. Either way, this is just an example. 6.30, I'm going to get my kids up. And I'm going to get dressed. 7.30, I'm going to take the kids to school. 8 o'clock, I'm going to walk the dog. I'm going to do a chore, listen to a podcast while I'm doing all those things before I start my work day at 9. So whatever you want your ideal morning routine to look like, um, that's what you're going to write right here. Those are those daily habits you want to do. Um, and then your evening routine. I would love for my kids to be in bed. I would love to be able to actually straighten up the night before. And then I get to bed a little bit early because I wake up early. So pretty much right after the kids go to bed, I'm ready for bed. And that's when I get my PJs on, brush my teeth. I love watching TV at night, but I also want to read and I get so irritated with myself when I don't actually read during the day. So I always make myself read at least one chapter and usually once I start that, I want to just read instead of watch TV. But I always have a hot cup of tea. So here's a trend, hot tea, hot coffee. I like my hot drinks. And then I've given myself that goal of reading a chapter or reading for 30 minutes and then we're gonna watch a show in bed and you might be like oh that's terrible but do it do your thing your thing that helps you so this is ideal don't guilt don't guilt trip yourself if that's not what it looks like right now these are ideas for you to set habits and goals for yourself and even maybe recognize what you want that to look like. Maybe you've never done that before and you were like, oh, that would be really helpful if I got organized in my brain of the three things I want to accomplish every morning. You might actually start accomplishing them. So cleaning schedule. I have the kids help me with the same chore I'm doing that day. So for example, Monday I do laundry. I have to do it twice a week. Monday and Thursday I do laundry. So that means, as far as the kids, they're going to bring me their laundry and they're going to put away their laundry. So in the morning, they might bring it to me. I do it during the day. After school, they're going to put it away. Or they've got laundry that was never put away that day. Whatever. We're all addressing laundry this day together. Tuesdays, they have trash cans in their bedrooms. They need to empty their trash cans. I've got to take, or my husband takes the trash to the curb. That's like his one chore. <laughs> so I help make sure that I'm reminding the kids they've got this chore. And then cleaning up the bathroom. They love to spit toothpaste all over the sink. So my daughter is in charge of wiping all that up. And then my son, since he's older, I've helped. I've taught him more complicated things like helping me wipe out the tub, which is fun. Okay, Wednesday is much simpler. They just dust their rooms or dust little things that I need helped with or like maybe the tables in the kitchen are crazy and so they help clear those off. Um, Friday is another trash day and I need to do this today. I've done the trash, but I need to vacuum the house. Um, rest on one of the days. Saturday is easy for it to be our Sabbath. So um, that's what I put on my schedule. You put it on whatever you want. But my kids like get so excited when they go look at the chore chart for Saturday. Because part of them earning video games each day is they can't have 
gotten in trouble, they need to do their homework, and they need to have done their daily chore. And so on Saturday, they're always looking, okay, well, I'm done. I don't have homework. I didn't get in trouble. And what's my chore just so I can play video games? And they get so pumped when they're like, oh yeah, it's Saturday. We don't have anything. So that's kind of like leading them into Sabbath rest and those good practices for yourself as well to take give yourself a rest. We have pets, so I always make sure I deep clean their areas and then kitchen always needs a good wipe down. So whatever you need cleaned in your house, this is my sample schedule. The kids and I do the same general task, but we each kind of get different assignments in that. So like my son might need to go pick up the dog poop in the background backyard and my daughter might need to fill up the water bowls and I might clean out the litter. So it's all different things within the same job. Um, same thing for kitchen. I make the kids vacuum their own rooms. That's it. Um, they don't have to vacuum the rest of the house, just their own rooms. Okay, and then anything else that you want to organize that was in this book, like maybe um, at the end of the month, that's when you need to look at your finances. Or maybe you look at your finances every week. So write that kind of down. You might want to look in the book for more ideas. I usually um, need a haircut every two months. So I might write haircut. Um, maybe if you want to treat yourself and do nails or a spa day or something every one or two months or whatever it is, write these things down just so you remember them. Um, and then I like to set up next month's calendar. I have one on the fridge that is for the kids so that they know this is where your piano, when your piano lesson is, this is when sports practice is, this is an exciting holiday coming up. They love that like visual countdown. So, and then you might need to set it up for work or talk to your spouse once a month and be like, hey, this is what's going on this next month. What are your weekends look like? Just kind of having a powwow. So this might be just like on the, the first of the month or the last day of the month that you check this little list. And the weekly prep is, I do it on Sundays when I do my meal planning. If that's not a good day for you, if Monday morning or Friday afternoon is when you want to do that, do that. So on here, I've got meal plan. I'm going to update my work calendar for next week. I need to order groceries, run errands. I like to get the kids to reset their rooms which is just me saying like during the week, I'm not a huge stickler for your room has to be clean, but Sunday night we're taking showers and your room is going to be clean. And you're going to get ready for this week so that we wake up Monday morning, not like chaotic. It's like a fresh start. So Sunday I help the kids get their rooms back in order and get ready for school. And then the other thing is in this day and age, I can check their grades online. I could check what is the state of your backpack. Do you have a banana that's been in there for six weeks? Um, that's not a good idea. So check backpacks every week. And yeah, anything else you could think to put on there? I know that's a ton and I could talk about organizing all day because I love doing it. You might hate it. And so I hope that this simplifies it for you in a way that you can... Um, like really get down to the nitty gritty plan of what you want and kind of be one and done. So you can just use this as a reference to look back on and not feel so overwhelmed and feel like you dumped all that work onto the pages to refer to later instead of trying to figure it out every day. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments before we wrap up. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, next month, we're going to talk about the Life Council which is a book about talking about making friends as a woman and kind of recognizing the women in your life and the roles they play and that not everybody needs to play your best friend role or if you don't have a best friend that that's not abnormal. It just approaches friendship in a really refreshing way and it even really makes you want to reach out to people that you're like, oh, I thought we should get together. We never did. Or an old friend that you're like, why don't I connect with them anymore? It just really makes you 
realize you have a lot more friendships around you than you think. And sometimes it just takes that new perspective shift or um, for you to be the one to reach out to have those friendships. Because I know that uh, we're in a season in our culture where we definitely are more connected than ever, yet more lonely than ever. So this is going to be great for you guys to get some tips and it has been for me. And then December, just as a heads up, we're reading You Are More Than You've Been Told. And that is by Hosanna Wong, who spoke at our church, and she is amazing. There's so much in here that you're going to want to read. Um, this is deeply spiritual. You'll love this. And it also helps you doing um, rhythms, kind of like the simplified um, life, but in your spiritual life instead of just your day-to-day -day family, social, house organization stuff so both these books you're going to want to grab for november and december as always you can watch these replays if you can't make those i've just posted those events in our facebook group and then all these books are available in the amazon store storefront that i just mentioned earlier so yeah i don't see any questions so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up and thank you girls so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I've got so many good surprises coming for you in November that I'll start telling you about next week. So for now, happy October. I'll see you next week.